let's talk about sending emails with Node.js. There's really two ways of doing that and most videos I've seen on YouTube only really talk about one or the other. So hopefully after watching my video, you'll have a better understanding of the two options and can make an informed decision on which one makes more sense to you. So let's imagine you've got your Node.js application right there. And at this point, it doesn't really matter if it's written in Node.js, could be any other programming language as well. And the first option would be to use what's called SMTP. That's the simple mail transfer protocol. And you just post a message to an email server, which is then responsible for actually sending that email to your recipient. And if you're doing that, you're beha behaving identical to a, let's say, desktop mail application, which is in most cases also using SMTP. The second option that you have is using what's called an email delivery service or just email service. And they typically implement an HTTP API. So you're making HTTP requests there and they themselves then use SMTP and most likely their own mail servers to actually send email. And at first glance, it might not immediately make sense why you would want to use such a service. But in these following slides, I will get into why that might be a good idea for you and your use case. The first point to consider is called deliverability. That means whether the emails that you're sending actually end up in your recipient's mailbox or whether they are rejected by their spam filter. And if you're using a managed service, you only really need to configure your domain once and they are, you know, really holding your hand through the whole process. So it shouldn't take you more than like 10, 15 minutes to do. But in case you want to do this yourself, there are some considerations that you need to take. And I figured, I found this article here. It's by the Grumpy Troll, which is an amazing name for a blog. And they write about small mail server best current practices. And in there, you can read this for yourself if you want to, they've got a section about deliverability fixes. So just briefly, what you should set up if you have your own mail server, um, you've got to have reverse DNS with matching forward DNS, of course, an MX record, accurate SPF, uh, this is an authentication system, DKIM setup, uh, RSA 2048 keys, which is effectively a hard requirement. You could be using elliptic curve keys, but they are not widely supported, so you need to dual sign, which makes it even more complicated. Um, DMARC record, TLS certificate from a certificate, certificate authority in the main trust anchor bundles, MTA STS, DNS security extensions, and the list just goes on and goes on. So there's really a lot to consider when you set up your own mail server and you want to do this right, because otherwise, well, you're just going to be flagged for spamming or whatever, and none of your emails will actually uh, end up in your recipient's mailboxes. The next point is the activity log. And that's basically a user interface over your mail server's logs. So you see every email that was sent at which time to which person and you can see whether or not it was accepted or rejected by their mail server. And it just really gives you nice insight into what's going on. And it's of course filterable. You see the error messages uh, all at once and you don't need to be digging into logs. They're all nicely archived. Just, it's handy. Now here's where it starts to get interesting. Most of these services have what's, what they call templates and they allow you to have a visual design editor for your emails. So you can drag and drop blocks of text and, and images and buttons and whatnot and just create your email that way. That's really cool because if you've ever tried to create an HTML email, you know that it's super tedious to do. Basically, no modern CSS works in there and you were stuck with laying out content with HTML tables and even if you're doing all that, it's still going to look different in every other email client on the face of the planet. So it's really, really tedious. I would not recommend getting into that if you can help it. And yeah, these templates help you out tremendously. And they've got variables in them. So if you've got like a account verification link, you can use these, whatever syntax they have, it's going to be different from service to service but you've got some syntax for variables within your templates 
and then you can substitute these values with values that you're sending via the API, API request. And last but not least, other people in your organization can edit emails without bothering you. So that means your design and marketing people can just you know, draft up a new version of, of this template. And that new version would then have a different template ID that you can then plug in your staging or QA environment, uh, have it test properly, and then just change the template ID in production and boom, you've got your new email there. Another important aspect of your email strategy should be statistics and analytics. And it just helps you get an insight into what's going on. So you see how many emails have been sent and you see how many types of emails have been sent. So maybe for some reason your password reset emails are spiking. And it's also useful for gathering data for A-B testing. So say you've got two emails and you want to see which one's performing better with your customers. You can totally set that up and get pretty accurate data with uh, tracking links. So in case you're not convinced and you just want to use SMTP to post messages to an email server within your node application, you can totally do that, like I said. Um, for that, I would recommend the node mailer package. And if you just look at their example down here, all you really need to do is set up a transport where you specify your SMTP server, some authentication, and then you use that transport to send mail. And it's really as simple as that. So now let's look at an email delivery service that's using HTTP for its API. And I have chosen SendGrid by Twilio. I've actually used this uh, at my job before and I was pretty satisfied with it. So I created a demo account right here. This would be the dashboard. Here you would see your requests. I have not made anything as of now. And uh, then let's go to email API and click on dynamic templates. And we're gonna create a template and then later send it with some Node.js code. So hit create dynamic template, call it anything and then add a new version to this template. And here you can select a design, so you can start with a blank template or you can choose something that's pre-made. So we are just gonna use this one right here. You can then select your editing experience, so you can decide between this visual editor or a code editor. So you still could uh, adjust HTML if you really wanted to, but we are going to use the design editor and it's gonna drop us into here. And here we can see the entire email. If you wanna change something, we can just go in there uh, and do that, as you can see. Of course, we could go to build and let's say add a new button wherever we want, um, change the text for that button, change the background color, all of these things. So you've got actually quite a lot of styling options here. You can decide on the padding and everything. So pretty cool. Let's get rid of that button. And uh, let's use variables. So here we can just edit it to say, welcome name, like that. And save the template. Now let's start coding. I've prepared this node application and all I did was install the at SendGrid mail client. I added a startup script. So I'm sourcing an environment file where I'm loading some environment variables and then I'm executing index.js with node. So in my end file, I've got a SendGrid API key and I've got a secret email address that I don't want people on YouTube to find out. So I have only need to censor it once if I put it in here. And then here in index.js, we can start coding. So let's say client is equal to require, require sendgrid mail. Then let's set up our client by setting the API key to process and sendgrid API key. And now we can already use this client. So let's say client.send. We can also say send multiple. So client.send um, to email and name. So we want to send an email to Peter. And here you would put in the email address, right? 
but in my case, I am going to say process.env.mysecret email. So I don't need to censor that in here. And then from, we're going to send from the same email address, but we're going to use a different name just for demonstration purposes. And because we're going to send, we're going to be sending a template, we're going to say which template uh, we actually want to send. So we say that with template ID. And we can get the template ID right here within send grid. Just put it right there. And then say dynamic template data. And here are your substitutions. So remember we use the name and right here we can then say name Peter. Or let's say Peter with two exclamation marks. And that's actually it. So this is a promise. So you could say then and just a little confirmation uh, email was sent. Of course, since this is a promise, you can use a sync await, but in my small little script, I'm not going to do that. And now we can run npm start and it should say email was sent. And then here in Gmail, we've received the email and we can see that it says welcome Peter, Peter with two exclamation marks because we have said so in here and everything else looks pretty good. And that's how you send emails with SendGrid. Now let's just as one last step, let's go back to SendGrid and say, we wanna see our activity. This is the activity log that I was talking about. So here we can search for a specific email address or some dates, or we can just say all emails. And here are all the emails I've sent emails to. Click on one get some more information. And there you can see that it was received by SendGrid. So our request was received by SendGrid at this time. It has then sent it to google.com to their SMTP server. And here you can see that it was opened four times because I've clicked on it four times. If you want to try out SendGrid for your own, you can do that with their free tier, which allows you to send 100 emails a day with most of their features enabled. But if you feel like setting up your own mail server and using NodeMailer as we discussed, please feel free to do that as well. The point of this video was really to show you the options that you have and uh, now it's your decision. So thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing because I'm going to upload a lot of videos on JavaScript and web technologies in general, and I'd love to have you with me. Cheers, guys.